Here we have the first Hyper Studios applicant, a successful applicant in her new studio in Eastbourne. This is Molly Shredwick, hosted by Hyper Studios. <coughs> Hi Molly! Yeah. <laughs> um, we're just going to do a talk around all the different works in the studio today. Um, we'll just do a quick walk around. So there's a the brand new works that have been created. What are these, about two metres across? Yeah, I think so. About right. two uh, so those are the two new ones and these are the smaller works from before that have all sold, which is fantastic. It's being stretched now as we speak. <laughs> um, and then just Quickly, we've got the smaller sculptures as well. We know some of these have been sold too. Yeah. <laughs> How are you finding your time in here? It's so nice. It's a really nice place to work in. It's such a nice. It's like having been working large for so long that like I've come in and I'm like, oh, I can never stop now. I can never stop painting, which is really nice. So it's been a little bit like disenfranchised about the whole thing before. For sure. It's nice to get back to working. So, uh, if you tell us a bit about the works that you're making currently. We've got these two pieces, um, how much more can there be? And also this piece, which is, do you have a title for this yet? It's untitled. Currently untitled. Um, but there will be two out of four, hopefully, in the, yeah. in the exhibition done at the end of, the, at the end of your time here. Yeah. They're just, I think at the moment they're really about the idea of like the elements interacting with each other, mm -hmm. more so than being about one specific story, which is generally, in the past, how my work has kind of come about. It's been like, I've sort of thought about something, or I've experienced something, or I've done something stupid, and I've been like, okay, I'll make a thing about this. Mm -hmm. um, but these ones, obviously, where it's locked down, and like, I've moved out of London because pandemic can't afford to stay there. And so these are kind of, I've begun to think a lot more about like the individual elements, and like how interesting ways to paint them that I maybe haven't thought about before, because previously my work has been very, very in the moment, don't think about anything. And where these are still very like, I guess some people would say very, very like in the moment, I don't have a plan, I have an idea going in really. I do tend to think about the elements a lot more when I'm doing them. Mm -hmm. Like the, the big white bit on this, for example, was something I've been looking at for a while with like other people's paintings and stuff. And I just kind of like painted in one coat of the, the white paint, and I don't know what the And then I ended up thinking like, if I leave it for now, I'm gonna keep going. It's actually made an effect that I really like. Yeah, I particularly like this hand sort of trace that's yeah, that's going through yeah. the the white cloud and around, sort of leaving its trail of blood all over the something sweet can. <laughs> so, yeah. so severed severed limbs are obviously a big part of your practice. Yeah, they are. I think it's kind of the like, this idea that I was looking into it um, a while ago in like the, the use of like severed hands and severed limbs in like classic horror and how they're a symbol for a loss of autonomy. Like in horror films, like, you know, when people's hands get chopped off and they get a life of their own, mm -hmm. or they're like, and just kind of, I think it's a really good symbolism, for like being a woman or like being young, especially, is this kind of idea that you do a lot of stupid stuff and you don't necessarily recognize yourself in your actions. Mm -hmm. I think it's, and I think this one, the, um, it was interesting about the idea that it's, um, avoid a hand, like you were saying about it. Yeah. It not being a hand, it's like... It's, it's, it's the gone. opposite of, isn't it? It's, yeah. the, it's the trace. It's like here you've got the, the the female hands that have sort of fallen by the wayside or have their own sort of autonomy that you're yeah. discussing and that you could see from a distance and sort of objective, whereas this yeah. feels like there's a void there. And like you were saying how there's a, been a departure in your work this morning yeah. when you're talking to your friend about how you're doing less sort of gory things yeah. in your practice, right? Yeah. And so maybe this is sort of, sort of one of the symbolic departures. Yeah, I think I, my work's kind of like changing at the moment. I think this is maybe like a representation of like me as a person changing, obviously like moving back to where I'm from, moving back to Eastbourne and like kind of like starting a fresh section of my life. Mm -hmm. And this painting is like the first big painting I've done that's coming back. And it's like... Maybe it's sort of like the idea of that and like the hands are kind of leaving and there's some kind of void coming back in. So these smaller works, you said that, you know, you've gone back to the large scale now that you've got some space yeah. to do this in and obviously at Camberwell that's what you were focusing on. But you've done these smaller pieces which you found more difficult. Yeah, I found them so I think working large, it's like you can be a lot more slapdash and if you go wrong, it's way easier to paint over it. And I, I personally find it a lot easier to get my thoughts out mm -hmm. on this much larger canvas, but working small made it so, I just, it just felt so difficult to kind of like condense my ideas onto a small canvas. Mm -hmm. And like, 
it felt a lot more it was like a lot more like illustration, which to me was really difficult because it felt a lot more detail oriented, which I'm generally I'm not I don't think anyway. I just, I just found, I found it so tricky. It was like, and then working with you guys just made me think, oh, like, I should probably try working small. Like, <laughs> I want to get, I want to get better. I don't want to be like, I can't, I don't want to only be able to do one thing. It's like a big thing. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, what's lovely is that you've got these sort of um, motifs that are obvious, obviously in in both your works, new and old. Yeah. So you do have these sort of gloves. Um, uh, what is called sort of. Uh, lacy gloves that's kind of come off the severed limb which is down here but it's also in this other new work that you've got yeah um so tell me a little pe- a bit about this so obviously text is a big thing yeah i work a lot with text and i think this is again this kind of idea that i've come back and i don't really want to do it i mean that's like i think a lot of people obviously are feeling that way at the moment it's like everyone's lives have changed so much mm-hmm. and i feel like that about my life and i think the text on this piece is from a, a piece of writing i did Right at the start of the first lockdown, when I was like in London, like living with my housemate, and we were like both freaking out a bit because we weren't really connected to anyone. And we were like, oh my god, this kind of what we're going to do. And I just keep writing about, um, and it references some jewellery I've been given. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of like, I'm trying to make all the elements interact together. I think the glove, I'm trying to like, I really enjoy like how the gloves are painted. Like, I really enjoy this kind of like transparent paint, and it's something that I've really been trying to like perfect like i really want to figure it out i mean really, there's like something i'm yeah. obsessed with figuring out it's quite a challenge though this is like one of the most difficult things to paint aside from like like rippling water I <laughs> <laughs> yeah i really i really want to do rippling water to that way i think i've got the attention span to like finish but, it but the texture on this is remarkable it does very much feel like that sort of um translucent quality that i know the yeah. exactly the thing you're referencing yeah i mean i yeah it's something i really want to practice it's something plastic or something. i really want to <laughs> I don't think I like that glove. I think it needs redoing. I'm going to figure it out. But we, we disagree. We disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of like the kind of transparency is kind of a recurring theme as well. Not sure. only like the the actual motifs in the work is like a lot of the techniques I'm using do kind of like carry on over works. Yeah. Which is kind of. So uh, we were sort of talking before, we, we mentioned that fact that maybe you, you just miss out ease, and is that the case? Like, was <laughs> that we have uh, some different pieces of text which um, su- su- suddenly stops? <laughs> yeah. I like that, I think, well, this is an accidental spelling mistake, yeah. um, but I think a lot of the time when I'm adding text on work, I'm mm-hmm. not necessarily thinking massively about the composition of the text on the work. Yeah. Like, to me, getting my idea across, or like my point across, or like trying to. Mm-hmm converse with whoever's looking at it is more important to me than necessarily the spelling being right or like the text being perfectly based around them. I think I'd rather get my ideas across. Absolutely. So there's a sense of urgency as well yeah. in what you're trying to say and what you're saying to people and how they understand the message. Yeah. Like I never I never want to think about an idea too long because I feel like Do you think it ruins it? I think it loses its kind of sincerity. Yeah. If I find like spending hours thinking about like mulling my like the theory about it over or like mulling over like oh is this text too high is that too low here's a weird question for you do you paint drunk ever sometimes i've done that a lot but obviously like at the moment like, i have to drive myself here yeah but so, like, i would imagine it sort of helps though in the sense of like yeah. that creating that sense of urgency yeah i think it is like it's something that <laughs> i think a lot of the notes because this painting for example is made this is what i did in 2019 while i was at uni still yeah. and it is a piece that is made from fragments from a sketchbook, because I work a lot in a sketchbook mm-hmm. and like take a lot of notes and like write a lot of text down and like kind of note down shapes and stuff and that is, this is from that kind of thing I mean, a lot of those notes are taken sort of like drunk when I've got home and the painting <laughs> kind of like, so it can be like a reflection on experiences and the feelings you're feeling yeah, at that very exactly, moment exactly, yeah, I think for a lot of, I've thought a lot about the symbolism of the motifs in my work and stuff and I think the boots, for me yeah, but there's a sort of fetishistic thing about that too, right? But but what for you, what do they mean? I think, because they, they were massive symbol in my work while I was uni and while I was like, you know, the world was a bit, normal, a bit more normal and stuff. And for me, they're a massive symbol for this idea of like drunkenness and stupid ideas and like, <laughs> and so not always necessarily like in a positive way. Like I think a lot of the time, like, they kind of like, it's like, kind of like a double-edged sword. Like sometimes I feel that they're like, oh, it's fun, I'm drunk, and like all these things are happening. 
but at the same time it can be like representation of like being drunk and being really insecure and like not knowing what we're doing and stuff. And I think it's interesting to put that in a painting and have it like not necessarily be clear mm -hmm. what my feelings about the moment is. Yeah. It's like how do you infer? Because I know a lot of people think it's about birth. This one, yeah. which I find really funny because it isn't something that I thought. It's about obviously his baby. And it's got like all this water on it and stuff. <laughs> So it seems like such an obvious, like... It is, but it isn't. Like, on some level, it feels like you just, you know, not you, but, like, me or whatever, you get back after a long night out, and you're like, oh, there's some water, you just yeah, knocked it exactly, over, yeah, and you're exactly. just like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel I feel that the thing that you're trying to convey, I think, is very successful, because I know exactly the feeling that you're talking yeah. about, when you're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, yeah. that was a fun night, I had a really good spontaneous time, but did I make a mistake? There's a bit of that drunk guilt about the whole yeah. thing. Exactly. But then, actually, at the same time, it also inspires you to do things that you wouldn't normally do, so there's, like, a double-edged sword yeah, in exactly. that. Yeah, it's amazing. Very, very cool. So do you have any more plans to make smaller works? Because I know that you've got a lot of demand for sales yeah, at the moment. I sold all of these, all of these works were in the show in December. I sold all of them, like, immediately, which was amazing. Now I can't go and buy some more paint and stuff. I just did a Jackson's order and I'm going to do another one soon. But amazing. I want to make some smaller works because, obviously, like, no one's putting them in my house. Well, maybe a museum will do oh, one day. Yeah, you need yeah. to make sure you keep them safe and sound so that when, when a museum yeah. wants them, they're ready to go. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to do some smaller works. Just aim for the challenge. Mm -hmm. Because like, it's something I struggle with. It's something I want to like get better at. And also the idea that like, I kind of want, you know, I want them to be available to people. I don't want them to just like, sit around and not get looked at and stuff like, rolled up somewhere. Sure. Do, they, do the smaller works inform your larger works at all? Or not really? They're totally separate pieces. I think I think they're obviously their own works in their own right and I think because I think about them so differently, I think how how I make them mm -hmm. makes me feel so different. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of like a whole separate entity in my mind because mm -hmm. I know that like although this would obviously scale down to a smaller painting. I can't imagine having ever painted that on a smaller surface. So it changes the subject and yeah. it changes the content massively. Yeah, massively. Which is really interesting because I don't think so many people operate like that. Yeah. You know, often the smaller ones are used as a maquette for the larger yeah. pieces, but this totally changes what you what you do, which is really yeah. interesting. I think it's just that I don't, my head can't like compute the idea of like this being smaller. It's just like the way I work, I think it's that kind of. There's some gravitas to this, though, which there isn't in this. You know, this. Yeah. You know, I know I love these, and not, you know, I love these very much. But these feel very, um, almost three D in yeah. their in their they weight. Have a completely different feeling about. Yeah, them. absolutely. Like, but maybe that's just because I've practiced the smaller ones enough. <laughs> I want to try it. Get them a little bit better. Okay. Well, we look forward to seeing the other two works that you're going to make. And uh, <laughs> thank you so much for being our first Hyper Studios artist. Thanks for having me. <laughs>